So I'm here on the panel um, with three people you've already met this morning. So Nicola Scott, um, a school nurse on Prem Aware Ambassador. We've got uh, Professor Samantha Johnson from the University of Leicester. And we have got Katrina Ogilvy, founder of The Smallest Things. Welcome and thank you. Um, now we've had loads of questions coming in, so I'm going to dive straight into the first one. Um, so somebody who's been watching this morning has asked, um, they say, my 11 year old who was born at 27 weeks ticks every box, Sam, you were talking about, um, but I feel few professionals really understand. What can I do? I think this is something that we hear quite commonly from parents is they feel that they're uh, uh, really talking to people and they're not listening to, to what the issues might be. Um, I think it's really about just keep trying. And I think as a parent going forward to approach your school, if you can inform yourself about what the kinds of support your child might need, that might help open up a dialogue. And I do suggest to have a look at the prison training um, and maybe take that poster into school to open up that conversation and say, look, here's the research evidence. Here's what it means. This is a real thing. Um, and this is what the research tells us. And I think that might help you have the evidence to approach the school and advocate for your child. Um, and I think that's where the sort of parent prem aware ambassadors are really coming in helpful to start opening up that conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Katrina, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's really about starting that conversation. And I think what parents say to us is they find that quite difficult because they haven't got the resources to go with them. But there are those resources out there and available. So it's having a look at prison training, getting a deeper understanding yourself of what the needs might be, but then being able to take those resources to your child's school so that you can sort of say, you know, you're going armed with, the yeah, evidence yeah. and you can really become an ambassador and advocate for, for your child in school and certainly that's sort of the feedback that we're getting from parents when they do take these resources into school actually schools are really welcoming yes. and of course we've got on the website um a guidance pack for schools haven't we so parents can go onto the smallest things website download that and send the link to their school and that's got all of this information as well so it's a good way of starting the conversation um, okay, another question we've had in, this one probably for you, Nicola. Um, did you know that your difficulties at school were related to your early birth? And the second part of the question, should parents speak to their children about it? Um, so when I was at school, mm. I didn't necessarily know that no. the difficulties that I had were a result of my initial birth. Um, that came later when yeah. I was looking into it myself. Um, and yeah, it's... It just, I just felt that it was me and that mm. was just it rather than anything. Um, my family have always been very open with me mm. um, about my early experiences um, and I think they knew on some level that there might be additional support that I needed even if no one else could see it. So yeah, I'd always advocate being really open with children as well um, because it is part of the jigsaw that makes them up. Um, and it can be something really significant. So yeah, I'd say to be open with them. Yeah, and I know your mum was an advocate for you, wasn't she? Talking to the schools during yes, that time yeah. as well. So yeah, thank you. Um, another question we've had in, uh, probably one for you, Katrina. Um, can secondary schools become prem aware? Can they win the prem aware award? They absolutely can. Um, I, and we do have some secondary schools in the UK who are prem aware, and I think that's a really important thing particularly for parents and you know I, I might be sort of hammering this one home because I've got a year six child about to go off to yeah. second week school in and September <laughs> um, but absolutely it's a really key transition yeah. point so I think there's two things to say about that one is that absolutely secondary schools can go through the present training and some will sort of echo that and become prem aware I think the other thing is to mention is that primary schools also, particularly if they're a PEM aware primary school and they know they've got a cohort of mm -hmm. year six children going off to secondary school, please do speak with the parents and say, how would you like us to share this information? Would you like us to speak to the secondary school about the preterm yeah. birth and what support your child might need to support that that smooth transition? Yeah. Um, and another question that came in was um, at the other end, um, in the early years, what about nurseries and preschools? Can they become PEM aware? Absolutely, and we do have some nurseries and preschools who are come aware at the moment. And again, a lot of the information I think Sam's probably best to speak to on this one is relevant in, in the prison training for preschools and, and nurseries. 
and there is an additional module in the pipeline, is it there to specifically focus on on those early years and principles? But yes, I'm so so when we develop the strategies, they're they're, they're really examples of good practice mm -hmm. um, that people can use in schools, that staff can use in schools to support children with those difficulties we've talked about that prematurely born children might have. And um, they are quite generic, so they are they are really relevant across sort of um, primary and secondary school. And as Katrina has said. Um, we're working with Loughborough University and we're going to be developing uh, an extra sixth section to go on the prison training, which will be focusing on support in the early years. And that will be useful for hopefully both parents, early years providers and those teachers who work with the early years to help children transition to primary. So keep an eye out for that. Oh, that sounds very exciting. And I like what you're saying. It's that information that needs to go with the child, doesn't it? I think we heard it in the video there from Cheryl. It's just keeping that information about prematurity with the child throughout the whole mm. education and career. Um, we've had another question in. I think we had a couple of people ask the same question. Um, perhaps one for you, uh, Sam. A number of parents have been asking if they should think about deferring their school start. Yeah, this is a really common question. Mm -hmm. And I think we could probably have a whole webinar on that. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I think essentially it's largely down to parental choice and individual circumstances, but we don't really know what mm. is the best approach to take. There have been no definitive sort of robust studies that have definitively answered that question. One of the most um, scientifically sound studies we carried out a few years ago using data from Germany, looking at whether delaying school entry by a year, so where the child enters school a year later, uh, in terms of both term and preterm born children, um, what impact that had on their outcomes at school. Um, and in fact, there was no evidence that delaying school entry had any advantage for children born at term or preterm. Um, but that was only early on in primary school, and we don't know what happened at secondary school. I think for, for those children who are born extremely preterm, especially in the summer months mm -hmm. where they're extremely preterm birth, has meant that they've entered school an academic year earlier than if they've been yeah. born at term. In those circumstances, it might be um, really helpful. But I think we have to remember that most preterm children are born a few weeks early, later moderately preterm. And actually for most children, getting them into school at the right time and getting support in there early from the earliest opportunity is probably the, the best approach. And I think um, we, we probably all agree, actually, we, we might need to think uh, think differently or change possibly the narrative around this, where we think less about, is my premature child ready for school? And more about, is the school ready for my premature child? And that is exactly what the Premaware Award is doing. So go out there, yeah. get your school to be ready um, for your child. So it's, it's a fantastic initiative. Is there anything you'd like to add there? I think it's just really echoing what, what Sam has said. I think as a charity, we really want parents to go out and have a bit more awareness and understanding. I think that mm. this sort of topic hasn't really been spoken about that much. I think lots of parents worry, lots of parents do consider deferring that, that school start. But actually, it's really important if you're making that big, big choice to have all sort of the information available to you. Um, every family's going to be different, but it's you know I, I think that's the big thing. It's making sure that the schools are are ready, mm -hmm. um, not about waiting for for the child to catch up. Let's get those schools ready for for our kids. What about you, Nicola? Do you know from your parents? Were you did you defer your school start or did you go? No, I went to school at the time. Yeah, I don't know if there was even an option to defer. No, so yeah, back in the nineties. I mean, my daughter's born at twenty eight weeks. Um, should have been October, was born in August, mm -hmm. and she went in the, she, we didn't defer, she went in the school year, mm -hmm. and uh, just finishing her first year of secondary school, and has just, you know, done really well in her early mm -hmm. assessment. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it depends, like we know, on the individual, um, but it's arming parents, isn't yeah. it, with that information, mm -hmm. that's something to give the school, but you're not making an excuse. Mm -hmm. I think Erin said it on the video. It's easy to dismiss prematurity as something that happens mm -hmm. in the early years. Well, you're past that now. Mm -hmm. We want to at school, you know, that happens in, in, in babyhood, mm -hmm. but actually, you know, it's something that carries on. I think you're really right. And I was going to say, if there's those specific needs that a child mm -hmm. has, it's so important to support them as early as possible. It's all about the early intervention. And I think if schools are aware of prematurity, and importantly, what that means, that they can get that support in their 
straight away, almost preventative yes. if, if, if needs be. And they're watching the child and uh, looking at their individual strengths and their needs and getting that support right from the outset of schooling could, could, could be the thing that makes the difference. Okay, on to the next question. We've had lots coming in this morning, so I want to rattle through them. Um, somebody has asked, who is the best person to contact at my school um, about Primaware? Yeah, and um, Nicola as well as one of our Primaware yeah. ambassadors who's been speaking with schools. Um, what parents say to us, and it is often parents who are going out to the schools, um, that the school centre is, is the place mm. to start. They're the ones responsible for children's special educational needs. Um, but also, you know, messaging the, the senior leadership team. If you've got particular concerns about your child's development or how they're doing in the classroom, it's so important to talk to the class teacher yeah. about those specific concerns. But in terms of kind of where absolutely school, school centres or, or head teachers. Yeah. I think Matt said it as well about not having to retell it every year. Yeah. So that yeah, the school's got that information yeah. that goes with the child. Yeah. 